Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Tech. Good to see you guys again, and I'm here today with my review of the Nubia Play 5G. Now this phone, honestly, was something I did not expect to review here on the channel, but I picked this phone up and I'm glad I did the first 144 hertz refresh rate on the channel. And there's a lot of things I have to say about this phone and also a chance for Nubia to really show themselves off here on Frankie Tech. Coming in at close to 300 US dollars, we're talking about a terrific Snapdragon 765 performance, but the star of the show by far is this 144 hertz refresh rate, which is just incredible. You see it here. This video doesn't do it justice because guys, this is a really game changing refresh rate. And I think really represents the future of where smartphones are eventually going. And ahead of time, guys, I'm working with a new setup today. I have some new lighting and a new kind of orientation on the video here. So hit me up in the comments. What do you think? I know a lot of you guys have always said that I hold the phone sideways when I do reviews. This is a chance for me to show you the phones with a little bit more of a vertical appearance and just have a chance to do more hands-on in a kind of a more interactive way here on the phones than I typically get a chance to do. So anyways, let's get started. And before I forget, let me show you what's inside the box. Pretty basic box here. It's not, I'd say, as nice an unboxing experience as Xiaomi's with this kind of flimsy paper, but it says be yourself. Green, I like the color green, that is nice. And then we just get a very basic, it says Nubia. And guys, this is probably my biggest complaint of this entire unboxing and first day experience with this phone. So have a look. Here's the paperwork, lifting this flap. Here we go, we have the Nubia charger and we have a cable. Pretty decent cable, kind of got a one plus vibe going here. And that's a nice touch. Look, we even have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to USB-C dongle. And so not a bad unboxing, right? Because we have everything we need, right? Wrong, we don't. Where is the case? Nubia, where is the case? And this is the first time in almost two years of reviewing Android phones here on Frankie Tech that I have not seen a case included in a smartphone of this price range. Now I've seen cases be excluded from phones like the Redmi Go or really budget phones like the Redmi 8A or 7A, but to not have a case included on a phone that is this pricey, I think is kind of a joke. And Nubia, if you are watching this, you guys should definitely consider including even just a cheap five cent TPU case. It can't be that much money to include something that will just protect this phone a little better than nothing at all. And so decent unboxing, but completely spoiled by the fact that there's no case. And I'm just very nervous now to use this phone day to day without that kind of protection. And I know a lot of you don't like those kind of cases, but they still serve their purpose because they're transparent. They still allow you to see the beauty of the design but they also provide at least some level of protection when you're out and about. Design. We have a 9.1 millimeter thick phone, 210 grams. So it is definitely a pretty hefty phone. Feels really good in the hand. And I think a big part of that is these flat edges. Now, typically I do like the curved edge of some other phones, but Nubia has opted instead for these very flat edges on the metal. And it's refreshing. It's refreshing to see another design language here on the channel. Also nice is this back. It's got this very cool kind of V gradient that you see Nubia 5G designed by Nubia. Not sure how I feel about this type of camera cutout, but that's probably the one little nitpick on the design. And on the front, you see here, guys, very uniform top and bottom bezels. For I think a lot of you notch and punch hole haters, this might be the ideal design. These bezels aren't very big and they are uniform. That's the main point. And they just fit with the gaming aspect of this phone. Sure, I would have liked to see maybe slightly lesser curves on the edges. And looking around the phone, we see here there's a mic hole, no IR blaster on the top antenna bands on the sides, single bottom firing speaker, and here we see the volume rocker and power buttons, and of course the capacitive triggers that are also available on the Red Magic 5G. So all in all guys, the design of this phone is actually one of the highlights. I do appreciate what Nubia has done here, and overall I think Nubia has done a solid job with his Nubia Play 5G. Display, we have a 6.65 inch AMOLED panel and the colors look very nice on this panel. The white point is solid, but the most important aspect of this panel guys is that incredible 144 Hertz refresh rate. Now, what I love that Nubia has done here is they've also included a 90 Hertz refresh rate. If you don't want this phone's battery to be eaten up, you can switch to 90 Hertz and it still looks buttery smooth. But if you really wanna live on the edge, you wanna go 144 Hertz and guys, I don't know how to 
to describe it to you, but this is just something you need to check out in a store. You need to use this refresh rate. I think people need to compare this to what we've seen on the OnePlus 8 Pro. And here we see the Nubia Play 5G next to the OnePlus 8 Pro. And I did not think that I would notice a difference between 120 hertz and 140. I do guys, I actually do. It's incredible. It is just a smoother and even more fluid experience. This is like you're looking at paper. It's almost like you're manipulating some physical object. 120 hertz gives me that same feeling, but there's just a level of smoothness that I see on this Nubia Play 5G that's unprecedented in my experience of using phones. And here's YouTube playback on on the Nubia Play 5G. And as you can see, because of the uniform bezels, it actually makes for a pretty decent experience. No notch, no punch hole. If you're gonna have slightly larger bezels, I prefer this very uniform full screen look. And now of course, does this compete with the bezel-less beauties like the Redmi K30 Pro or the Mi 9T Pro? But I still think you'll have a solid viewing experience. Viewing angles are very nice on this panel. And since a good display will offer a great content viewing experience, despite just a single bottom firing speaker. I think that Nubia has done a solid job here. You'll enjoy great content on the Nubia Play 5G. But one thing they couldn't get here guys, wah, wah, wah. L3 security level for Widevine CDM on this Nubia Play 5G. It's to be expected for a smaller Chinese company. I would have loved to see L1, but I guess in this case we're back to the usual scenario for China ROM phones. No HD Netflix support on the Nubia Play 5G. And talking about performance, here are the Geekbench scores with the Snapdragon 765, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. And as you can see here, these scores are very much in line from other 765 phones. Here is the Mi 10 Lite Zoom as a comparison. And we have seen Antutu scores for this phone in the 325,000 range. But I think the main question when it comes to performance is, does the Snapdragon 765, is it capable of being able to manage this 144 hertz refresh rate? Absolutely. Going in and out of apps, this thing still works beautifully. It doesn't slow down at all. And once I'm in the Play Store, it is a super buttery smooth experience. It has been the single best thing about using this phone. I think the 144 hertz does even more than the chipset itself to make this one of the most fluid experiences you will ever have on a smartphone. And talking about battery, we have a 5,100 milliampere capacity on this Nubia Play 5G. This is a 30 watt fast charger that comes in the box, which is still plenty fast. And stay tuned, of course, for my charge test of this Nubia Play 5G to see how quickly this bad boy charges up. But no complaints about the battery so far. In fact, guys, I have not charged this phone since I got it. I'm still using this with the same battery that it came with from the factory. So that can give you an idea of just how incredible the battery in this Nubia Play 5G 5G is. And talking about two things here guys, the fingerprint scanner, it is fast and fluid. I've had zero issues with it as you can see. Actually one of the faster fingerprint scanners I've used and this phone once again is giving me these Realme X2 vibes with this design and with this super fast fingerprint scanner, maybe second only to that phone. It's definitely faster than some of the ones I've been using recently. Now I wish I could say the same about the vibration motor. The vibration motor isn't the best. It's a little bit too harsh actually. It vibrates too much. I wish it was a little bit more subtle in the way it did it. So for example, in Gboard, I've had to reduce to almost 3ms, because if you use the default, the phone just vibrates way too much. So I recommend 3ms right there, and you'll have a pretty decent typing experience. But this is definitely not to the level of the vibration motors we've seen in the Redmi K30 Pro or the Mi 10 series. And now the quick audio speaker test, single bottom firing speaker on this Nubia Play 5G, no headphone jack. I'm gonna bring the mic down, let's have a listen. What can I say? Pretty decent audio performance here from this Nubia Play 5G. It's nothing incredible. It's definitely middle of the road. It's not gonna blow you away with the quality, but I would say it's a decent, if not even just good speaker. It's not to the level of the Mi 10 Pros or even the OnePlus 8 Pro, but you have pretty clear sounds and it gets fairly loud overall. So a solid speaker here on the Nubia Play 5G. 
And talking about the cameras, we have a 48 megapixel f1.8, and this is a Sony IMX582. And I don't remember the last time I reviewed a phone with this slightly older sensor. If I'm not mistaken, the Mi 9T had a similar sensor as this phone. So it's not going to be to the level of any of the modern flagship phones or even the better mid range phones that have come out. You'll have a better camera experience, I think, on a Redmi K30 Pro with the IMX686. Rounding out the cameras, we have an 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and then we have a 2 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. And just a quick mini rant here about these little 2 megapixel sensors. I don't know why so many Chinese companies continue to do this. You basically say we have a quad camera and yet half of the cameras on the phone are just kind of useless. A depth sensor maybe has a bit of use, but a 2 megapixel macro camera is going to be very low quality, especially if it's lacking autofocus. It's going to be very hard to get any usable shots from it. And unfortunately, we're missing a telephoto lens, which would actually have been a useful camera here. So I would say to Chinese companies, it's not always about how many cameras you have on the back. This phone would have been completely fine with just three cameras. And if it had just included a telephoto instead of those two other two megapixel lowly cameras, it would have been a much better overall experience. 4K 30 and up to 4K 60 on this Nubia Play 5G. And the camera app is not too bad overall. Let's take a quick photo of BB-8 and a very fast shutter overall. Yeah, decent quality, but nothing spectacular. Clearly this is a gaming centric phone, so you'll have to look elsewhere if you want a really great camera on your smartphone. But have a look at these samples and let me know what you think in the comments. This is 4K 30 FPS video on the Nubia Play 5G. Pretty overcast day here in Hong Kong. A little bit of a exposure shift there as I go further down. That looks pretty good. But hit me up in the comments, what do you think? And here's front facing video on the Nubia Play 5G in typical kind of vlog mode style here. I have the air on, so you know, you see how the mics sound, how do they sound in this type of environment? Hit me up in the comments, what do you think? And here we go, wrapping up with some PUBG action on the Nubia Play 5G. And there you see the refresh rate from 60 to 90, but we're going to go to 144 hertz. And we also see the shoulder triggers. I have them actually set up perfectly right now, lighting up in the area where the PUBG triggers are. And unfortunately, this is one of the negatives of getting phones so early. Clearly, this phone is not optimized for PUBG at all, considering the fact we're only able to play on HD and high. So let's go to realistic. Enable anti-aliasing and shadows and disable auto adjust graphics. Okay, and let's get started. And it's time. It's time for the classic Frankie Tech Swim Test. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Woo! Oh yeah. No notch, no punch hole, baby. Full screen delight. And at the plane jump, how are we doing on this Nubia Play 5G? No stutters whatsoever. The Adreno 620 handling this like a boss. Let's get down to the surface, get some guns, get some action. And we're in the game now, guys. Gonna try to get some guns real quick. So let's try to get ourselves in a gaming stance here. And with this new setup, guys, it's a lot more comfortable to game than it typically is. I'm typically hunched over and to the side, whereas now I'm able to really kind of get into this game. And hopefully you can still hear what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, there we go. Take that. Booyah, one kill on the Nubia Play 5G. And once again, I gotta remember here, <laughs> let's try to get the next kill with these triggers, which as you can see are working no problem. Completely mapped here to both of the triggers. 
And I see someone in the distance there. Looks like someone just got off of this bike. Let's go ahead and drive around for a little bit. Get over to this red zone. Booyah! Oh crap! <laughs> that was not good. Okay, let's see if we can get some action over here. Oh my gosh! And I was just hit with a bomb from the sky, guys. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. Just off camera, but the bombs are dropping and they're dropping fast and furious here. And I think I'm done for. Oh my gosh. And what are the odds, guys? You can see the triggers are working, but I am incapacitated. How that bomb just fell from the sky and landed right on me. That was kind of nuts. And let's see, how is this Nubia Play 5G doing? The CPU and GPU seem to be hanging in there. Good network performance. Let's go into spectate mode. I am dead now. But as you can see, you can go GPU turbo, CPU turbo, or you can just choose super performance. And this will allow you an even smoother gameplay experience. Let's watch a little bit of this action here. Am I bothered by the bezels? Not at all. For some reason, they don't bother me on this phone. They're even smaller than the ones you see on the Black Shark 3 series. And I just like the fact that this Nubia Play 5G isn't messing around with gimmicks. I don't need a fan in my phone. All I need is a nice full screen display and a Snapdragon 765 and the phone is cool to the touch. And once you include these capacitive triggers, the nice full screen display, I think you're gonna have a solid mid-range gaming experience here on the Nubia Play 5G. So that's it for this video and my final verdict on this Nubia Play 5G. You know, my experience with Nubia has been up and down. I remember this was one of the earliest companies and I once was a Nubia fan until I had a really bad experience with one of their phones. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was with the Nubia Z7 Max. But anyways, that phone got bricked and I never was able to get it fixed. I was never able to get any support for the phone. It was early times. I mean, we're talking 2014 here. So the company has obviously evolved a lot since then. When I reviewed the Red Magic 3 last year, I think I just didn't really like their implementation of the gaming software and the gaming experience, and I really found the fan to just be a real gimmick. We have laptops moving away from including fans in them. Why do we need phones that now include fans in them? It just doesn't make any sense, in my opinion. And so when I saw this Nubia Play 5G, here I saw an opportunity for Nubia to impress me again with just a solid phone. A phone that has incredible specs fast fingerprint scanner and that offers that gorgeous 144 hertz refresh rate at an incredible 300 to 350 US dollars entry level price. And so what do I think about this phone guys? Did Nubia nail it? They did not nail it, but they definitely created a solid mid-range phone that I think a lot of you should definitely take note of. Now this Nubia Play 5G is not without its issues. I think the cameras could definitely be a little bit better. The design, while decent, isn't amazing, but hey, at least it's a little bit more distinct, I would say, than some of the phones that I've been reviewing. Battery life so far seems pretty rock solid. And last but not least, that Snapdragon 765 performance and this 144 hertz refresh rate for the price is unparalleled right now. They're offering something that is unprecedented at this price point in the market. Don't forget also, this is an AMOLED panel. So this still is better than any Poco X2 with a 120 hertz LCD. This is one of the best displays I have ever used. And considering it's found here in this mid-range phone is even more incredible. And so because of that, I can kind of look past a launcher that is not my favorite. It definitely needs a little bit of work. And with a little more refinement, and with a little more refinement, I think Nubia will have a pretty solid UI on their hands. And so who is this phone for? I think if you're a gaming enthusiast and you want to get in on a phone that will provide a really incredible fluid experience just overall, but also give you some of those gaming features that you see on the more expensive phones, like the capacitive shoulder buttons, and rock solid performance here with an amazing refresh rate and that S space with all your gaming needs, then this is a great option for you to consider. That said though, I think for a lot of my audience and for a lot of you Xiaomi lovers, you're not even considering this phone. You may not have heard of Nubia right now, but let me tell you, if they keep making phones like this and keep stepping up their game, they're gonna be a big player in the smartphone space very soon. And so despite not shipping a case with this phone, I think Nubia has done a solid job here. Good work, Nubia. You're taking steps in the right direction, and I can't wait to see what you guys do next.
But hit me up in the comments, what do you think of this Nubia Play 5G? Is there enough here to entice you to have a look? Or are you dead set on your Xiaomi, Realme, or other more well-known phones? Hit me up in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Also, let me know guys, what did you think of this format using a slightly different lighting and arrangement? I think it works really well on days like this where it's absolutely dark outside and I need a little bit more lighting to really spruce up the look. So hit me up in the comments as well what you thought of that. But that's it for this video. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Raggy Tech, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for future updates. Stay tuned guys, more great content including that full comparison between this Nubia Play 5G, the Mi 10 Lite Zoom, and the Mi Note 10 Lite. It's gonna be a mid-range battle here on Frankie Tech coming up very soon, stay tuned. So that's it for this one, and this is where I leave you by saying, this is Frankie Tech signing off. Have a good one.